from avid gamers to esports commentators, few people fully grasp the hottest competitive video games. But with millions of dollars at stake, these teams don't just play, they compete. Discover the complex world of Dota 2. They have fought hard and triumphed over many. Now only two teams remain. And the Aegis of Champions hangs in the balance. The International Grand Finals begin! Oh my god. Uh, trying to explain how Dota is played. Um, that is an incredibly difficult question. This is why Dota is uh, such a game with a high barrier to entry. How long does it take to understand Dota? Well, <laughs> I don't know if anyone ever totally understands Dota, even the pro players. Uh, they'll often be wrong. You're never really as good as you need to be. Everybody can always get better. There's only maybe three to five players that really are top of the game at any, at any point in time. It's really the beauty of the game, is there's no one right way to play, and there's no one idea about how the game should be played that overrides all other ideas no matter what. I'd say it might even be harder, though, to watch the game and spectate it. Because when you're playing, your job is to control one character. That's what you have to worry about. When you're watching a pro game, you're watching 10 characters, all with these crazy different abilities, all interacting at once. When all hell breaks loose in the Dota match, it is just this hallucinatory like light show. And even if you play the game, there is so much being packed into these brief team fights that it can take a lot of time watching replays in slow motion before you fully understand what you just saw and why it happened. It, it takes a long time to learn the game really fully. You kind of have to play all the time. You don't see the subtle differences that it takes to be a professional player. So how many, how many times are you going to be able to show somebody a 30 second or one minute video clip that says, look at this crazy thing that happens. And it's going to somehow be self-explanatory. Oh, They're all together. PPD, here comes the Ice Blast, ready for the dunk! And from the universe, it's a disaster! CDC! Like, even if you don't know how to read a Dota fight, you can look at an entire team full of characters getting blown to pieces and sort of internalize, like, okay, those guys just got nuked, and that's pretty cool. They're going to get locked for the face of the Earth, the pop from Aggressive, he'll jump out! Uh, the $6 million Echo Slam was sort of the climactic play of the final between the Evil Geniuses team and CDEC, uh, which was a out-of-nowhere team from China that had this miraculous run at this most recent uh, international. It was an interesting situation where CDEC came into the tournament as a wildcard team. So that means they were not invited. Some teams get directly invited to the main event, others have to qualify. And they just kept on winning. They kept on winning and winning, and then you're thinking, this team might just go the whole way. Nobody can stop them. They were undefeated at the main event. One team had its entire championship on the line, CDEC. This was their chance to turn things around. And they're playing an American team. American teams historically don't do too well in just about any esport you can name. And so I think there's a lot of fans in that arena who are still sort of not believing what they're seeing. Like everyone knew Evil Geniuses was a world contender at the start of this tournament. But it's one of those things where you're just waiting for it to go wrong. The stakes were actually very high for EG and CDEC. The first place prize was a little over $6 million. You never really know how it's gonna fall. Uh, the last couple of games, it just comes down to a, a, a couple interesting things, and that's why it's always so fun to watch TI. What was happening in the final game between uh, CDEC and Evil Geniuses is that CDEC were struggling. C deck, they're already trailing two to one in the best of five, so if they lose this game, they're going home but they're starting to make a comeback and they had just pulled off a really good play. They had killed a player from Evil Geniuses called Sumail, who is, I think, their number one player, maybe their number two, but he's a very important carry. So once Sumail died, people were thinking like, oh my God, the comeback is on. Like, this is how it starts. This is how it all slips away. CDEC was losing the game slightly, I would say. They were in a position where they could still win the game, but it, they didn't have as much room to work with as EG did. 
and they're feeling a little bit desperate. They try to sneak into the Roshan pit. And Roshan is a creature that gives you a lot of experience, a lot of gold, but more importantly drops something called the Aegis of the Immortal. It's an item you can pick up, it sits in your inventory, and when you die, you come back for free with an extra life. Your opponents don't get gold for killing you, they don't get experience, uh, and you get to fight the second life as well. So it's a very powerful item. C-Deck is trying to sneak this Aegis. They're trying to pull a fast one on EG. Roshan also lives in this tiny little pit and is an extremely vulnerable location and you have to send in most of your team to kill Roshan. As EG shifted over to try to approach, CDEC thought for sure that EG was not going to pressure them or in their inexperience they just didn't think about it very much, they just felt the adrenaline. Evil Geniuses knew they were in there and there's a lot of what they call area of effect spells in Dota. And so when you have your entire team packed into this tiny little bowl, there's a lot of things the other team can do to you if they know you're in there. PPD dropped down an Ice Vortex, which is a little blue cloud thing that gives vision. And as soon as that was dropped, CDC said, oh, they're close by. The other EG player followed up. He has an item that allows him to teleport a great distance in one shot. He blinks right into the Roshan pit and does an Echo Slam. And it does massive damage but then it also stuns the entire team. It was an entire, like, it was like an atom bomb being dropped into that pit. And all the while, the rest of EG are piling in, throwing all their abilities. And at that point, it's just a shooting gallery. And that was the end of their comeback rally, and the end of the game followed shortly thereafter. It looks really, really bad for them. My friends have the run, you best run behind him. They keep running out, but GG They really shouldn't have won that. Like, they shouldn't have had that opportunity to kill four heroes like that. It's incredibly dramatic. You know, if you had an open goal shot in hockey, but that open goal, like, determined who was going to be the champion, uh, it would still be a dramatic moment, even though it wasn't that special a moment. Like, there was nobody in the net. It was just one of those defining clutch moments where a player doesn't hesitate, just goes for the jugular under pressure, and was exactly right about his decision making. But the Eichel was like, you killed four heroes <laughs> with two characters. Like, that's amazing. You got the kills. They all died, and you cemented your victory. Ladies and gentlemen, the champions of the international evil genius. And after a week of watching this high-level competition and all these dramatic moments, it's a little tempting to see like how you do. You're gonna see the characters on the screen. You're gonna be able to tell when they're dead. You're not gonna know why they died. You're not gonna know how strong they are. You're not gonna be able to see the intricacies. Like, should he have been able to die there? Should he have been able to live? Not only have you watched this game enough that you're starting to understand it, but there's this other part of you that's aware that that guy's just playing it on a mouse and keyboard the same as you have in your office. You know, it's not like football where in a million years, I could never throw like Aaron Rodgers. But in eSports, you can just install that game and play the exact same game the pros are. And that's one nice thing that I really like about eSports is that you can be a fan, but you can also just sit back on your computer and play with your friends. How long would you say did it take you interacting with the game to really get a good grasp of it? I'll let you know when I finish. <laughs>